This site was known as an Episcopalian meeting house for a long time before we came here. Um, but it's really only since digging it that we've realised that actually there's a whole structure under here, not just a pile of stones, which is all you could see before we started. So we're standing in the middle of a T-shaped stone foundation. And so behind us there's a door which would have thrown you in from the north of the building into this the room here. Uh, and we've got uh, the east wing here, which is fairly poorly preserved. There's a lot of roots, uh, animal burrowing, and the walls are much, much less well preserved. But just over in the middle of the east wall there's a doorway. You can see the stonework is different and there's a gap and some cobbles. The hall of this end was built up with rubble. Um, we thought the wall was in a line with that big stone there, but when we tried to find the wall, it obviously wasn't there, so we had to move back a bit, and um, lo and behold, there it is underneath, just about a metre further along. We found another door in it, in the middle, the same as there is at the other end, with the beautiful threshold stones, and in this case, and just in front of it, there's cobbles, great big slabs. So that's the first bit of flooring that we've actually had. So that, that's really quite exciting. Uh, there are two doors in the south wall. So one of them is very similar. The wall sort of stops at a nice end to it and you've got threshold stones. But the other one is um, constructions of enormous water washed uh, linear boulders. So very sort of long thin boulders, which would have been quite a statement from the outside been digging out this doorway um, for the last few days really which has been quite exciting. Um, I first of all came across the, the big stones and you can see these there's quite big stones either side of the doorway and realised there must be something here um, and then started coming down and you can see we've got uh, the doorstep at the front there. Um, you can quite clearly see the two sockets either side of the the doorway there. They were for the posts for going round the door to, so that they could then hang the door um, on. But the interesting thing here is that, that the faraway one is much deeper than uh, this closer one. So we've been debating, you know, why they would have done that. Would that have been the hinge side? I, we don't know yet. We're, and there are several doors on the, the site. So we'll go round and have a look at them all and see if that can tell us anything. What we do, we always have to draw so that folk later on can find out just exactly what this building um, is about without actually having to be on site. So um, what I'm doing at the moment is drawing between the two large stones, so from the outer edges of the two large stones and the doorway. And uh, so hopefully I've only just started with this one here um, and it's going to be a profile of the, the stones. And there's another door um, at the west end. So we've got five doors all together for this structure, which is quite a lot. Um, one of them definitely went out of use and was blocked. So therefore it's possible some of the others did as well, but they're not as well preserved, so we're not seeing that, that blockage. The walls are quite thick, so 80 centimetres thick, and the whole tea was built in one phase. So it would have been a two, two and a half storey building, you know, with an attic. Um, a, a long south elevation overlooking gardens which unfortunately now that's all fields and so although we have done some trenching here we have not found evidence of the gardens um, and also we're lacking flooring and roofing material so we would have thought um, this building was built sometime probably in the 1500s we don't have an exact date but that by the time it went out of use in the 1700s um, and then was burnt down they must have taken away all the stones so all the building stone uh, they would have probably had a stone tile roof probably a stone flag floor and it's just all been taken away and we found a couple of little fragments of flatter stone that might have been from the floor or roof but it's been just been really completely stripped so we found a lot of window glass and we've got certain areas where we found a lot more glass where the windows would have been and they've obviously been demolished and broken onto the inside of the building um, and it's been dated there's two phases of glazing so one is sort of 1550s to 1600 
uh, which may be the glazing from when the house was built. Uh, and we've got a group of uh, window glass which is slightly later, so 1650 to 1700. Uh, and so they've been chemically anal analysed and that's what, um, you know, the dates. So um, we think that probably there would have been some windows which have had the early glass in and some the later glass. And so when the building was burnt down, um, the windows would have, some of them would have shattered. We found glass that's been melted, window glass, so presumably with the heat of the fire. Um, but by the north area here, we found a lot of burnt timbers uh, when we were here in 2016. So we've had them dated to the middle of the 1700s. So we think that's the date of the... Uh, so it was either burnt down or it burnt down by mistake. We're not, we're not quite sure. Um, we haven't found many personal items. We found a few coins. We found a brooch, um, but we found four spectacle lenses. One of them is um, the whole lens with the copper alloy frame around here and the nose piece, but no arms. So we think it's probably 1600s, so maybe the use of the building, or maybe 1700s to do with the demolition. Um, and then we found three more bits of the lenses. Derek has been reading some of the documents about the um, Cumberland's troops who burnt down a building around here, and so the date would fit with that in the middle of the 1700s, but we can't prove that this was. We've got local volunteers, we've got archaeologists who are having a holiday here for a week and then doing some digging. There's a lot of archaeology students from Aberdeen, from the University of the Highlands and Islands, but also we've had school classes in every day. Um, we had 60 primary sixes one day from one of the local schools, um, all helping us to dig out the layers inside the building. And um, we've had some families visiting. We were just walking through the, the park last year. We were sitting here doing digs last year. And it came up on Facebook that you are doing a dig. I just thought we'd come along today and help out. Yeah, we've basically just arrived, so we're just kind of finding our feet just now. And we've been asked to just try to uncover the rest of this wall. I'm a volunteer archaeologist here at Adam, and I've been tasked with looking at the outside of the north gable. We've got an area of demolition. We've also got a little bit of burning, so we know the building actually was uh, set fire to. Um, within the building we've had a lot of charred timbers. We know it burnt down and then we've had a just a hard packed area of soil. We were maybe anticipating cobbles but we didn't have them so they were just walking around on the mud certainly on this north gable and then coming down onto this orange soil which is what we call the natural, it's the base soil. We are working on these post holes, so they're excavated and they look like something similar to a post setting or a post hole that might be used for maybe furniture or something. So we've done some little sections into it to investigate to see if there's a cut and a fill or to see whether they've backfilled with the same material. We've not found much other than the fact that there doesn't seem to be a change. So either they've pushed them into the soil or they've backfilled with what they've taken out. Um, and we're just about to draw the plans up now. Um, well, it was discovered four or five years ago, so anything about learning about the local history of the park, um, the Keith family, learning about the history of the site itself because it was destroyed, um, is all adding to what we know about Adam Park and making a much bigger picture. The charters refer to this fortified house of the Keith family and so we think this is most likely what this is that this is a building that wasn't known about until three or four years ago um, when Derek and his dog Morlick walked across here and found it and reported it. Actually it was really the dog that found it uh, but um, he can't speak for himself so I'm taking all the credit for, <laughs> for finding this. But um, we looked at that first, the three stones, and I thought it, it was a definite alignment. We walked a wee bit further south and uh, there was definitely this mound and what was peculiar about the mound was that um, there were stones rolled in a t-shape right round the edge of the mound but it was obvious they were not part of any structure they had just seemed to be rolled onto the site so um, we were uh, we were looking at that as a, as a possible you know it's something to look at underneath so that's why we started digging and we thought where are we with that it's all experience so this is the sort of thing we get to do at uni but not as much um, so it's good to get out and do lots of different sites, lots of um, different eras, periods, things like that. Um, and it's good to meet new people in the field. We saw the, the poster on Facebook and we live quite local. And we came down and we just missed the last dig at the mansion house. So I uh, thought we'd get in quicker this time round. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's stuff that you 
wouldn't have normally noticed. We've walked yeah. down here multiple times and never really noticed this area. So it, it's great to find out about the history of it. If you just sort of walked into the site after it's finished, you can read all the boards, but you can't ask any questions of a board. Whereas the people involved, you get their enthusiasm and you, their knowledge. Um, and you, you can sort of see, see the, the process in action and not just the aftermath. Yeah, it's important to preserve as well, because this was just a pile of rocks, you know, so now we can get a kind of idea of it. So it's important to preserve that history, I think. Uh, so that, because it's on the north side of the building, that would have probably been a service entrance yeah. there. Right, um, Dodgy, sorry to interrupt. No. I just I'd only just noticed, what's going on down there? Uh, the, that's Moira, she's doing a test bit because there are other, so there's uh, other features in the landscape that we're taking All a right. look at. We found a bank that runs from the sort of south of the site, adjacent to the tower house remains, all the way up to the remains of a small building up in the north. Um, it's mainly a bank, but we've also got some of these large stones associated with it. And in a test pit further to the south, we found that it's actually a wall base. So it could have been that this was a big wall that's then been robbed out and we've just been left with a bank that's associated with the foundations. We're just not sure. So we're sinking more test pits to try and establish that it all runs together and hopefully the way it was built. Even though the walls have been very heavily robbed in the past, you know, just from the amount that we've got standing here we can tell a huge amount about what the building was like 